it's Jonathan Gators from Aquaponics NYC and we're up in Woodstock doing the Woodstock edition and today's subject is the siphon and this probably doesn't look like any siphon you've seen before uh, this is something I developed which I'm calling the easy tea siphon and the reason why it's easy is because it's you know just your basic 90 degree elbows one T fitting, which is why I call it the easy T siphon, and some end caps, and of course your standard PVC uh, tube. So this basically will fit just down into your bulkhead fitting like so, and that's it, your siphon set up. Of course, there's a little bit more to it than that, and we're going to go ahead and show you all the little details I need to know about setting a siphon like this up for yourself. So let's get to that. First off, I want to give a shout out to Afnan and his bell valve, or commonly referred to as Afnan's bell siphon. Uh, this thing works really well and is very reliable and it is used by aquaponics enthusiasts around the world in their media beds. But there are a couple of things that I never really liked about it. I like my grow beds to be aesthetically pleasing. And in the case of the bell siphon, you always have this white cylinder sticking up out of your media. I like it really just to have the plants and the media. I think it's just a nicer look overall. So the other reason is just the general complicated nature of building one of these bell siphons. For instance, you need a breather tube and there's no fitting to fit the breather tube into the bell itself. You need the outer shell to keep the media. You need the bell itself and the standpipe. Uh, it just seems like a lot of elements and there's a lot of things that need to be tuned when you're using the bell siphon. So that's why in the past I've used a loop siphon, and if you're interested in the loop siphon, you can see the link to my video here. So I had a grow bed that was too small for a bell siphon, too small for a loop siphon, and I needed a better way to get a siphon into that small grow bed. So I looked at this design for the bell siphon, and I realized that that breather tube is actually sucking up water too as the water level descends down through the grow bed and it's not until it hits the very bottom that it starts to suck in air. So why can't that breather tube itself be larger so that it's able to suck in more water? And if it's able to suck in more water, do you even need the bell at all? So I decided to test out this theory by uh, putting this together with a three-way fitting and this was my first prototype and it worked it worked really well then i realized that a three-way fitting is the same thing as a t-fitting so why not use a t-fitting and that is the genesis of the easy t siphon so now let's set one up in our grow bed so first off, measuring my grow bed, it's nine inches. Uh, and you know, your grow bed will be different. So you'll want to cut your standpipe uh, appropriately. In this case, uh, I'm gonna cut this standpipe to about six inches. That's about three inches below the lip of my grow bed. So all the water intake goes through these end caps and we need to put enough holes in the end cap so that we won't restrict the volume of water that can go through the pipe. So we'll need about 10 or 12 holes drilled in this. And we drill them around the edges and we also drill them through the ends of the pipe. Next up are the media guards. Uh, this is kind of similar to what you see in the bell siphon. You have the outside media guard that sits through the entire grow bed. But this will sit at the very bottom of the grow bed. 
and just allow water through it, uh, but keep the media and roots out. So we use a 7th, 8th inch drill bit to cut the hole for the inlet pipe. And you can see that the inlet pipe fits nice and snugly in the hole. So here are all the components for the EZT siphon. Not too complicated. Just some pipe, some fittings, and some drilled out end caps. Let's put it together. This is a clear vinyl tube. And I just put it in the end of the standpipe, and this allows for just slightly less flow into the grow bed, so it takes a little longer to fill up. It's optional, you can use it if you want. We'll put the T on top of the standpipe. And the elbows. We'll attach the caps to the inlet pipe. And then we'll put the media cards over the inlet pipes. And there it is, your easy T siphon. And lastly, we'll put on the overflow pipe. So let's go ahead and test this siphon. I bought some clear PVC pipe so that you can see the action inside of the siphon itself. So the way the siphon works is as the water rises, it pushes the air up over the elbows and down the center tube. The water inside the pipe is just slightly higher than the water outside the pipe. And this allows the water to flow down the center of the T. And when the water flows down the center of the T from both sides, you can see it flowing over the edges there. Eventually it'll meet in the middle and this will cause suction to suck out the rest of the air. And when that suction occurs, then all the air goes out of the T and down the tube and your siphon starts. So what's below the grow bed can matter too. Uh, the length of the drain pipe can affect the siphon. Then the elbow will help start the siphon, but having an elbow that's half inch to three quarter inch will help stop the siphon as it allows more air to get in from the bottom of the siphon to stop it. So I'm attaching a three quarter inch to one inch T and a one inch pipe here. And this is my siphon silencer. It actually makes the draining of your grow bed very quiet. And it has an additional bonus of aerating your fish tank. It drags the air down through the water column. I discovered while researching for this video that Afnan had developed this in 2010 while I developed it in 2012. It's very interesting that we both came up with the, the same design. So our grow bed is almost empty 
and you'll see the siphon start to break. Often bubbles will come up one side, not both. It's not quite broken yet. And this is why the elbow at the bottom of the drain pipe is important. Having that three quarter inch elbow allows air to enter from the bottom of the drain pipe to break the siphon. And you'll notice a burp at the end of the cycle. So now I want to talk a little bit about the flow rates of the water coming into your grow bed. Let's fill up the grow bed with some media. And I have this glass here that has some eggshells at the bottom of it to help with the pH. So the flow rate can affect whether your siphon starts or stops. So I have a couple of ways to adjust the flow rate. First is the ball valve that controls how much water is returning to the tank. Second is the ball valve going to each individual grow bed. Here you can see that we have a very low flow of water. And when the, there's a low flow of water, the siphon will not start. You don't get that suction action going down through the middle of the T. The water in the middle of the T never joins and creates a suction. So this will continue to run like this at that low flow rate. So you definitely should adjust your flow rates, try different flow rates. This would be too much. So we have to turn it down. That would be too little. You have to find that uh, zone where your flow rates are are going to work for your siphon both starting and stopping and when you get it right your grow bed will work flawlessly for forever and that's that burp i was talking about one last thing about the flow rates uh, going to your grow bed. Evaporation can affect your flow rates because as your water evaporates, the water level drops in your tank, which means that the pressure at the bottom of the tank drops. That means that the pressure that the pump is pumping up to the grow bed drops, which means less water into your grow bed. And when you have less water into your grow bed, like we saw earlier, uh, your siphon won't start. But you'll find that that range that your siphon will work in, where there's too much water and too little water. Um, generally, I like to start sort of near the too much water, because then over time, as there's evaporation, the siphon will still work as the water level drops in the fish tank. So that's it. Uh, I really hope that you found this design interesting. And I hope even more that you actually use it. And if you do use it, let me know. And let me know how it's working for you. If you did use it or are trying it and it's not working for you, let me know that too. I'd be happy to answer your questions below uh, regarding the siphon. And uh, just want some feedback and what you guys think about it. So that's it. Aquaponics NYC. Woodstock Edition, signing out.